So we'll open this in Collab. You can see the link to it in GitHub at the bottom. You should have a open in Collab link at the top. Sometimes GitHub has a broken link up here. If you just click that, it will take you right into Collab where you can make use of this and actually run the code. We're gonna run this part where it detects Collab and we'll see that we're using Collab. You don't have to use Collab. You can certainly use this outside of. This is not using any local GPU anyway. We're using ChatGPT completely through Langchain through an API. Now you will want to install Langchain. This command installs Langchain and also the OpenAI driver that is needed. Langchain abstracts the differences between a lot of these underlying large language models for you. And that's very handy because then you can switch them out and try, try different ones. Langchain also gives you common patterns that you use when dealing with these large language models and that makes your life easier. We will see examples of those as we go through these two sections, these two, two videos that talk about Langchain and using large language models. So once you run this, it will go through, it will install everything. You're gonna need an API key. Now, if you're taking this class at Washington University, I'll provide you with one. Go to assignment six in Canvas and you'll see the API key. You should have access to it. If you are from the internet watching these videos, you'll need to get your own API key from OpenAI and I provide you with some links to describe how to do that. You'll wanna put your token in here, whether you got it from me or it's your own, and then you'll wanna pick the model that you're using. This is a model, this is not the state-of-the-art one. Uh, the, the four series would be more state-of-the-art, but 3.5 is really pretty good and it won't chew through your token limits quite as, as fast. So you can run this part of it and this shows you just how to quickly get it going answering a question for you. We are going to ask it, what are the five largest cities in the US by population? And it's going to return those. We call LLM invoke. You'll see invoke used a lot on a lot of different object types in Langchain. This gets into the chain of Langchain. You can chain together a bunch of objects into a chain that all have an invoke method and it just calls invoke, invoke, invoke. It calls invoke on the first one, puts the output to the, to the next one and continues on down the chain. We'll see a chain here in a little bit. But for now, we're just doing one thing. We're saying response equals LLM.invoke on the question. And that will give you your cities. You'll all just so notice that I'm using a temperature of zero. I'm not really doing anything all that creative with this. I'm, I'm just extracting data, asking it basic questions. I don't want the creativity high, which is what the temperature specifies. I want it to just stick to task, get the data that I'm asking for and not try to be overly creative. When we get into more chatbot kind of things, when we get into memory in the next part, yeah, then we're gonna bump up that temperature and we're gonna ask it to be a little more creative. But for now, stick to your job, do it, temperature zero. And you'll see that we get the response and it's a string. You'll see there's a number of things going on here. There's numbers in here, it, it put number headings on those. You might not want that. So that's something you would want to solve in your prompt which is the input coming in. The more clear you make your prompt, the better. That way it doesn't give you extra information that is gonna make your parsing job potentially more difficult. So these prompts, they're very, very important to large language models. This is how it gets all of its information on what you need to do through the prompt. So we'll see other things that you can do. We'll see that they can have memory. As you have a cold conversation with it, it remembers things from earlier in the conversation. That's not something that large languages support out of the box. You have to basically construct that prompt so that the memory, what it was remembering before, is prepended to the prompt so that it has all of that information for it. We'll see more about those in, in a moment. But here I'm putting something in French. Uh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce the French, I will do poorly. But this is a common saying and you can translate the text. So this is what it's saying to do, translate the text that is delimited by the triple backticks into a style that is style uh, and here's your text. 
So the style is saying American English. The text is going to be what you want to translate it. And this is just a normal uh, F string. So it's going to put in the, those values and build that bigger prompt. And that you can certainly use F strings to build these, but we'll see Langchain gives us a better way. So if you run this, it's going to just tell you let the let the good times roll, which is which is fine. That is what we're expecting from the translation. We'll see that sometimes it gets a little more creative, unfortunately. So you might want to lock down on really what this what this is telling it to do with prompt engineering. So here, I am going to use the chat prompt template. This is going to take this same string, but it's going to put it in. Langchain's going to put it in. These curly brackets, these are not F strings. There's no F on the beginning of the string. So now we can use the prompt template and we tell it to format the message. And we can see that it's basically inserting uh, American English and the text in Chinese this time that we would like to translate. And you can see it's just filling in the blanks. Uh, you can see it filled in American English there and it filled in Chinese there. And then when you run it, it does put some variation here. Notice it does repeat what you told it to translate. Maybe you want it to do that, maybe you don't. But if you're not telling it, it, it figures maybe that's not a bad idea. If we run it, then we can see this time it doesn't. So there's some variation going on here for sure. You can solve the variation by providing more explicit prompts. You can say return only the translated text. That would certainly help. And then you can also do some post-processing on it as well. Let's talk about processing output. You might be trying to pull in multiple pieces of information from something. So here we're going to look at product descriptions where we'll want to get the material, the shape, and who the product is actually for. Those are the three things we're trying to pull from it. So we create these response schemas. And this is just text telling the large language model what to do. Remember, large language models, everything is in human language to tell it what to do. You're not coding it nearly as much. So you tell it that you're looking for material. What is the material that this item is made of? If unknown, make an estimate. You should always tell it what to do when it can't find something. Otherwise, it's going to try to interpolate it, which is going to look like a, a hallucination sometimes. Or you tell it to return null if it can't find it. Or you can also tell it estimate it to the best you can. And these three are the three fields that we're looking for. We put them into a nice list. And then what we are going, and then what we're going to do is create the output parser, part of Langchain. And we're going to pass it in those schema names. And we're going to create the format instructions for the, uh, from the output parser for the prompt. So if we run this, it's creating those format instructions. And we'll see those get inserted later. But if you just want to see them, those are taking those three fields that we're looking for. And it's telling it this is generated by Langchain because it goes into the prompt. Because remember, everything must be in the prompt. It tells you to, it tells it, it tells LL, the LLM to extract it in JSON form. So you're going to get those three fields and output to you in JSON form. So now we see that we can run this thing in a chain. This is not a chain chain yet, but we're just doing it in, in order here. We run it and we can see that the output from our product text, which is right here, Ross Brachiosaurus has a gentle spirit that any dog will quickly love. This is some random dog toy I picked off of Amazon. His long body lends itself for tossing or tugging along with friends. And his size makes him an excellent cuddle companion. Sounds like a nice dog toy, doesn't it? And we extract. The material is plush because it is made out. My dog actually has this toy because it is made out of like plushy material. The shape, it's in the shape of a dinosaur, trust me. And who is it for? A dog. So this is pretty neat. It, it, it got these, it, it linked these three things together. Is if we want to really see the chain happening here, I'm gonna comment those out and then I'm gonna print result one. Because now when we run it, we can see that this is basically just creating the prompt. It's calling the invoke function. 
This is not getting any information back. It's just turning those instructions and the three fields into a message that is going to go to the large language model. Then we actually call the large language model and we can see the result come back from that. So the prompt that we generate gets passed right into the large language model and then you'll see the output. So this is the JSON that the LLM is returning us and we're going to want to parse that JSON. It's JSON embedded in Markdown. And then the rest of it is what we saw in the first place. It just goes through and it does the entire thing. So that's a chain of commands that, that you're giving it. And you can do the chain using ORs, prompt or LLM or output parser, and it has the same effect. So you don't have to do this manual sort of chaining of it. You can use the actual chain as in lang chain that it has here. We'll look at a quick application to text extraction. Here we're going to call the chat template. It's telling it you are to extract birth dates from the provided text, return the date in this form, so we tell it a sample form, or none if there is no birthday. And here's the text that we're going to provide. So this is our system prompt that we're going to provide it. And we give it the input text. John was born on June 14th and married on this other date. So you've got multiple dates in there. So you have to find the birth date. That would be tricky before large language models. You'd maybe be looking for keywords like birth or other things like that. We create the chain, the prompt template, and the LLM, and then we can run it, and it gives us this nice date. This code here will be very useful to you when you're completing assignment six. You can run this in a loop, like you'll have to do in assignment six, and you can see all of these dates that it extracts. Now you'll notice some of these, it's not following your instructions. It's not putting the date in the right form. So there's a variety of ways you can maybe deal with this. One is more precise instructions, but you always have to be ready for those LLMs to, to go rogue and have their Skynet moment where they just do what they want to do. And that's, that's uh, what you're going to have here. So you'll probably want to check the format, maybe resubmit it variety of different techniques that you can maybe do there. Well, that's the introduction into large language models and using LangChain. There's a lot more to LangChain in the next section. We're going to look at how to construct a uh, chatbot with it and use memory so that it remembers some of the things you're telling it. Thank you for watching the video and subscribe to the channel if you want to keep track of everything that goes on with this class or future classes or uh, projects that I work on in artificial intelligence.